Hi, this is Simon Obstall and welcome to another tutorial for Blender. And today it's going to be an introduction to the cloth simulation. And we're going to be looking at two different types of project. One where the cloth falls, just like this, and the other where the cloth is already draped over the object and then it's dragged off, which is quite a bit more interesting. So let's make a start on this. So first of all, I'm going to delete the default cube and then I'm going to come over and add some text. Let's just get it at least pointing the right way. Rotate it through 90 degrees on X and then let's come over to the text properties. So let's set the alignment to center. I'll zoom in a bit on it. Let's tab into edit mode and change the text. So cloth line break simulation. I don't much like this font, so I'm going to go for something chunkier. I think I'll probably just go for a basic, nice fat Futura like that. And then let's come down and just reduce that line spacing a bit. Maybe go for 0.65. Let's also give it an extrusion. So open up the geometry. Let's have an extrude of 0.25. And let's also just give it a very small bevel. So I don't know, point zero 0.01 is probably enough. Now, in order to be able to use this as a collision object, we have to convert it to a mesh. So I'm going to come out of edit mode. I'm going to right click, convert to mesh. And then we can come over to the physics tab and select collision. So I'm also going to add now a mesh plane, swivel over to the top view, so S and X to scale it on X to the width of the text. And then S and Y to scale it out to something like this. And then let's move it up on Z. So G, Z, move it up like that. What we can now do is apply a cloth simulation to the cloth. So we're in the physics tab and we're just going to hit that cloth button. And I want you to see what happens if we just don't change anything else. So to run the simulation, we need to be on the first frame and we simply need to hit play. So, ah, it lands on the text, but it doesn't deform. And that's because we haven't got any subdivisions to the mesh. So I'm going to tab into edit mode and I'm going to right click and select subdivide. And let's go for something like 12 and let's come back out of edit mode and then let's run the simulation again. So now it lands and it's very awkward. It's kind of wriggling around like crazy. We can't really live with that either. So that's not enough subdivisions. So again, let's tab into edit mode, right click, subdivide, and let's go for another five. So we've got a pretty dense mesh, something like that. Again, come out of edit mode and run the simulation. And that's looking a lot better. It's not smooth, but then we can improve that by selecting Shade Smooth from the contextual menu there. That's already starting to be quite a lot better. And we can also, if we want, after the cloth modifier, so come over to the Modifiers tab, add a Smooth in there. And then just crank up the repeats a bit. And you can see that's now quite a lot smoother. And it's now looking like that. And that's actually not too bad. So what I'm also going to do is come back to the physics tab and just adjust the cloth material. So at the moment it's set to the default. Uh, if we select one of these others, it's going to behave differently. And these various different parameters are going to update. So I'm going to select silk because I want a lot more movement in the cloth. So select silk. And you'll see that these have changed to much smaller numbers. And I might actually just reduce those even more. So go down to one for each of these. So now let's run the simulation. And it's looking a lot smoother. But you'll see that there's still these creases here. Can you see that? It's kind of trying to wriggle around into the letter. And we could spend a lot of time trying to get this to work. But I think there's a, a simpler solution, which is to create a dummy object to use instead of the text. So I'm going to hide the plane, which is our cloth, and I'm going to add mesh cube. So I'm going to switch into edit mode, make sure I'm in faces. So select this face here, G and X, move it out till it's the same width as cloth. 
same thing, thing the other side. Select the face, G, X, move it out like that. Select this top face, G, Z, move it down so it's just above the word simulation. Select the bottom face, again, just move it up, G, Z, till it's there. So select this top face, E to extrude, and then move it up till it's just covering the word cloth. Select this side face, E to extrude, move it out till it's just covering the S. Select this side face, E to extrude, move it out so it's just covering the N. Switch back to object mode and then S and Y, and we're just going to scale it till it's just slightly larger than the text on Y. So now what we can do is in the physics properties, we can add collision to this cube. Again, let's reduce that friction. Let's go down to one. And we can come to the text and disable its collision, or rather delete its collision. So remove that modifier from the text. So now we can turn the plane back on again to come back to our first frame. And if we run the simulation, you can see we've now got a much smoother result because we are just using a modified cube rather than the text. So we don't have any awkward folds. And I think that's probably a better solution. So you can probably see that the cube is kind of poking back through the cloth, but we're not actually going to be looking at that cube. In fact, we're going to turn off its visibility here and turn off its render visibility. And actually that's pretty much sorted it out. If it hasn't, however, we can come down to the collisions section and we can increase that object collisions distance. But in this case, we don't actually need to, so we're, we're, we're pretty good. What I do want to do, though, is to turn on self collisions. And what this does, obviously, is to get the cloth to interact with itself and not just the collision object. So we've completed the first part of the project and here's my render of it. I've uh, obviously added some materials and lighting, and what I've also done is added uh, some wind just to give this nice sort of drifting effect after the cloth has landed. So this is what happens when we get the cloth to fall onto the text, but what if we want it to be sitting on the text and then get pulled off as in this other example? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to let the simulation run until the cloth has got to a place that we think looks like it's reasonably settled and it's not moving around too much anymore. Sort of frame 80, I think we are. And with the cloth selected, we are going to right click, convert to mesh. And if you look now, our plane no longer has the cloth modifier on it and it's static. So we've frozen it in this position where it's nicely draped over our collision object like this. And then what we can do is reapply the cloth simulation to this new position for the cloth. So with the plane selected physics properties cloth, and again, let's select silk. And let's just remember to come down and turn on self collisions. So now what happens if we press play to run the simulation is that the fabric collapses into its new position. And that's something we're going to need to address because obviously we don't want that. We want it to be nice and static uh, before we rip it off. So we are going to look at that later on. But first of all, I want to address the question of how we're going to tear the fabric off the object. First of all, it's important to turn off the visibility of the cloth simulation in the viewport. And then I'm going to come into edit mode and I want to select uh, points and I'm going to select the end point here and then the end point here, holding down the control key, and that selects all of them in between. And then I'm going to come to vertex and vertex groups and assign to new group. And now if we come down to the object data properties here, you'll see there's a, a new group called group and let's call that front edge. And still in edit mode, I want to come back to the vertex menu and I want to come down to hooks and I want to hook to new object. And what this does, as you'll probably see here in the viewport and up here in the outliner, is that it's created a new empty. And we can use that empty to drag those vertices. 
So let's tab out of edit mode. And there's a few things we need to now sort out. Uh, well, let's come to the plane and the modifier. And you can see we've now got this hook empty below the cloth modifier. I actually want to use this to drag it up above the cloth modifier and also to select that front edge vertex group. I'm going to leave the cloth viewport display turned off just while I set this up. We need to come back in the end and, and turn that back on again. So I'm going to come to this empty and select object properties. And I think I'll come forward to like 30 frames. So it doesn't start immediately at the beginning. We've got a bit of a hold. And then I'm going to hit I while hovering over the location. So it's given me some keyframes there. I'm going to move forward to 120 frames, zoom out a little bit and drag it down on Z. And you can see how those pinned vertices are moving along with it. Let's also move it across a little bit on X like that. And then also move it out a little bit on Y. And having done that, let's hit I to set a keyframe for all of those. Let's come back to the beginning. So now what we need to do is come back to the plane, the cloth, and we need to turn back on its viewport visibility. And then finally, we need to come back to the physics properties for the cloth. And we need to come to the shape section here. And from this pin group menu, we need to select our front edge vertices. And now, hopefully, if we come to the beginning and press play, it settles. And then at frame 30, the cloth is progressively dragged off the object like this. It's going through it at the moment. And we can fix that if we come down to the collisions tab here. And I mentioned earlier on that the object collisions is a, f a factor that one sometimes needs to bring into play. I'm going to increase that value to 0 0.075. And if we rerun the simulation, cloth starts getting pulled off at frame 30. And this time it looks as though we've done enough and the object is not poking through the cloth. So two final points. You'll notice that the cloth is now quite wrinkled again. And we can fix that in the same way that we did before by coming to the modifiers tab, add modifier and smooth. And we can just increase that until we get the amount of smoothness that we want. I've probably gone a little bit too far because it's looking a little bit too flat at this point, but really you can adjust that to taste. So the other thing I mentioned is that we need to sort out this issue of it collapsing like that at the start. So we can do that by coming back to the physics properties. And if we come down, let's close up the physical properties there. If we open up the cache section, come back to the first frame, let's delete this cache. And what we can do is we can get the simulation to start before the scene begins, if that makes any sense. So if we enter a simulation start value of something like negative 30, that collapse is going to happen before frame one. And hopefully frame one is then going to be nice and static. And we can just pre-calculate that by making sure we're on the first frame and hitting calculate to frame. And you'll see that down here, it's calculating those 30 frames before the start. And now you'll see that frame one is in fact static and it doesn't start to move much until frame 30 when it gets dragged off. And while we're talking about baking, do make sure you bake the entire animation before you try to render this. Otherwise you might get some very unexpected results. So here's my final render of that. And I'll post this Blender project in the description so you can poke around and have a look. So I hope this has been a useful introduction to cloth simulation. Getting to grips with pinned vertices is the key to getting cloth to move in uh, interesting and useful ways. So thanks very much indeed for watching and I hope to see you again soon.